Okay. Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 153. We are your host, oh wait, no, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern time. We're your hosts, I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa, hi Anton. Hey Marwa, good to see you again. We've had a couple of weeks off. Um, I was on vacation, uh, and I think one week I was just too busy working. Hi. How about you? Oh, it looks like- My heart's cut. I'm back. Ah, very good. Well, that's the problem with a live show. Sometimes we freeze, but uh, I think we have you. Um, so this week's episode is everything you ever wanted to know about the combo box, but we're afraid to ask. Um, so the combo box itself is pretty straightforward, um, but there are some things that you should be aware of. So Marwa, why don't you kick us off? I'll, I'll, uh, share your screen. Oh, we've only got, let me rewind a second. We've only got five minutes, but we're going to do the tip on combo box in five minutes. And then we're going to have a longer discussion about some of these things that are a bigger conversation, but the combo box is a good place to look at them. All right, Marwa, you're on. Tell me about a combo box. Why is it better than a select list? Right. So here I have a report on employee and on the form page, I have the department item. Yes. This is actually a combo box. So if you take a look, we have a list of values of the departments and I can pick any one of them, but also I can type a new department. And then I will hit apply changes. This new department will get stored in the, into the department table and also will be assigned to this employee as we can see here. Okay, so that seems like a bit of magic because our form will only update the employee table. It's not going to insert a new row into the department table by default. How'd you get that to work? Okay, let's take a look. So on this form page, let me jump to page 19 form page. This is our form and this is the department item. It's of type combo box and it has a setting that says manual entries item. And these are the new values that user could add. This is the, the item, the extra item that I created on this page. It's a hidden item and it has the value protected setting and checked. So when the page gets submitted, this item is going to have, for example, IT in it. Exactly. It's not going to be a department number. It's going to be whatever the person typed. Yes, and we actually need the department number. So let's take a look at our processes. I added a new process to process this extra value. And so first I'm going to check if that department name already exists in the department table. And if yes, I'm going to take the department number. If no, uh, when no data found exception, I'm going to add a new row in the department table and return the department number into the department number item. I see. So you have to write your own code to handle this is what you're telling me. The, data, the, the, the combo box doesn't handle any of this. You have to write the code to do it. Yes, I need to process whatever I should do with the new values. The combo box only stores the new values into a different item. So why didn't you just do nine rows, uh, lines nine through 11? Why did you need the, the two through five? Okay, I'm checking first because there could be another user at the same time adding the same department number. So I need to check if like there is already department number and the department table already added. I suppose the same department name is what we're saying, but um, yes, sorry, you department. the same department name with different case. And, ah, so this is a great question. And I think this, Brian, is the next point in all of this is you have to handle all of this. This, this is exactly right. What is your business logic? Are you allowed to have two, right? This is perfect example of maybe P19 Depno Extra needs to be uppercased. And then you would do it in, in lines, both line five and in line 10. Maybe you need to trim it, right? There may be business rules that you have about this, right? So that's 
that is really what we're getting at here is just that you need to do these things yourself. Uh, you need to handle business rules, as Brian pointed out. You need to handle, as Marwa pointed out, um, the case of multi-user concurrency. So that's that's a big piece of this. Um, okay, so Marwa, um, are there any other features about this combo box that uh, that we should look into? Yes, actually, I've presented uh, the feature select when you have the com uh, one of the combo box, but it could be multi-selection for the combo box. We could select multiple values. Right. Okay. And that brings in even more wrinkles. Now, right now, we're at four minutes and 10 seconds. So as a tip goes, I say... We, meet, we met a tip about combo boxes in four minutes and 10 seconds. But we're going to continue this discussion and we're going to go into the multi-value combo box and the wrinkles that are associated with that. So let's give this a try. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, so same idea, but now I've added skills. And skills, as we can see, is multi-value. Now, I could store skills as comma separated in a single in a single um, column in my database. I could store it colon separated in a single column, but the data modeler in me says, mm, I don't want to do that. I want this to be a detail table. I want the skills to be a table itself. So I want to have a table called skills or skill, which we see I have this skill and it's got a certain set of skills these right here. And I want to have an emp skill table that is my intersection table between my emp no and my skill ID. Okay. So now I want to use a multi-value combo box. This is where things get tricky. Exactly. So first let's take a quick look at this report that we have right here. Um, it's somewhere. Here it is. This report, this column. Well, this column is based upon a list ag, right? So I've got this list ag that, that figures out the colon separated list within it, and it gets my skill name. It does everything I need to get my comma separated lists. When I come in here, this skills needs to be what those skills are. So let me pick uh, here, and here we have Apex SQL JavaScript. So it picked it up and put it in here. So I needed a way to get whatever those, that colon separated list, one colon two colon 20 to be in here so that my, my list of values could convert that to the names. So this, this, this item needs to have one colon two colon 20 or something like that in it. Well, what I've done is to, to avoid having to write a lot of code over and over for these kinds of things, I wrote a plugin. And so my plugin is called a, uh, it's a, it's a process plugin that, that is a detail table to multi-value item. So my plugin just essentially does a list ag. It gets the detail table name is emp skill. The foreign key column name is emp no. The item containing that is p3 emp no. Um, the data column is in, in the emp skill is skill ID. My multi-value column is P3 skills and my delimiter is a colon. So this little plugin basically just does a list ag and puts the result into my skills item. So that lets my page have the right things to do a combo box. All right. But Marwa, what's this all about? It's about... Um solving the issue of lost update and we can we can test that together right we can and so the idea is this apex is no longer going to handle lost updates for this item i need to handle them myself so this particular plugin works in conjunction with another plug plugin called process skills which is the multi-value item to the detail table it takes the same items and it says, okay, it does lost update protection. It checks to see if somebody else has updated the same record as me. So Marwa, let's see how that works. I'm currently on um, the president, this guy's record. What Can you pull up that same record? 
I'll put yes. you on the stage. So if you pull up that same record and I'm no longer seeing your screen. Maybe I should share again. Ah, let's try that. Um, I'll put mine on. So you can see the change that I'm going to make is I'm going to delete Apex, but I'm going to add CSS, but I'm not going to hit apply changes yet. Then I'm going to let Marwa do the same thing. So Marwa, you've brought up the same employee record. What are you going to do? I made a couple changes. What, what change do you want to do? I'm going to delete JavaScript. Okay. So you've deleted JavaScript. Go ahead and apply changes. All right. And that worked just great. Now I'm going to return to my screen. This is me. Now you can see JavaScript is still on there on mine. If I apply changes, I'm going to add it back on, but I don't know that you changed it while I was looking at it. And that's where this lost update protection comes in. I click apply changes. I see skill data has changed. Awesome. All right. All right, so let's take a look at how all of this works within the um, within the combo box. I'm also going to just show that the combo box will also allow me to add something new altogether. Um, let's just say uh, Perl. I'm good at Perl. I'm going to put that in there and apply changes. Um, and now we've got Perl. So that had to write it to the skill table and the, to the EMP skill table and do all of those things. So. This is easy. This is done by the plugin, right? Well, the plugin doesn't add the new ones. The plugin only handles the EMP skill table. It doesn't ha handle the new ones of the combo box. That we have to do. And we have to do it almost exactly the same way you did it. We're going to process the new skills. And what you did was essentially this. You said, let's first check to see if that skill exists. If it, if it does exist, we're going to get that skill ID. If it doesn't exist, we're going to create a new one by inserting it into it right here. That's the same thing you did with DEMP. And then we have to add that into our skills. So we're going to add that new skill ID. So we do each of those. We run them through, add them on. And then after that's done, we'll have our process skills. This will take it from our multi-value item and move it into our detail table. Um, but it's got our little lost update protection right here as well. Okay. Thanks. And so there's one more key piece to all of this in that we don't want two users doing all of this at the same time. Yes, like two users accessing the same employee make it changes at the same time. Right. So how what what solves that, that two of us aren't be able to do all of this at once? We should be making one user waiting for the other one. I mean, locking the row that we are working on. Right. But fortunately, Apex handles that lock for us because what we really want to do is we want to lock the employee record so that none of these details can change. But Apex does that right in here because by default, it locks, locks the employee row. So when I hit update, if you and I hit apply changes at the same exact instant, one of us is going to come in first and they're going to lock this row and it's going to stay locked until all of these things happen and then it will unlock and the other person can do it. And so that will all handle all of the locking and all of the lost update protection. All of this multi-user concurrency stuff is complicated. Apex helps a lot. Yes. And if the data changes, the user will get the message that data has already been changed. That's right. And so the user will get one of two messages depending on what's changed. If you've only ch if you've changed something on the EMP record, they're going to get the default Apex message that the row is changed into requery. If nothing changed on the EMP record and something only changed on the skills record from the other person, they'll get the skills one. So right. So the first person, all of their, their changes will get applied. The second person, their changes will get applied if only their things changed and nothing else did. So that's great. Why is it that this runs through and it locks for all three of these? There is a setting in the application attributes that handles this um, feature of locking all the processes. That's right. right. If we go in here into the application itself and we look for security, 
we can see that right here, it says session state commits at the end of the request. So all of these things happen, all, all three of these happen, and then there's a single commit, unless you explicitly put a commit in there. If you wanted to allow for processing to continue here, you could explicitly put a commit in one of these that would unlock that row. But right. by default, you probably want to be your transaction to be all together. So this was a great update that Apex did many years ago that they changed it so that not each one commits, that they commit at the end. But some scenarios, you may want to squeeze in an extra commit. So this is your bonus tip for the day that if you're finding that you have a long running transaction, but it's okay to commit in the middle, you can just go ahead, you can stick a different, you can add an extra process in here, wherever you want, you can just say commit. And all you have to do is commit. So, and that would, for example, unlock. And that would do it. And then the other things could process. Generally speaking, you don't want to do that, but under some rare occasions, you may want to commit and allow other processes to continue on so that you're not stacking things up. Um, right. Great. Thank uh, you, Andy. This was interesting. And we actually have other options in the uh, attribute in the application definition, yes. uh, apart from end, end of request. Yes. Um, so. You, you, well, you mean that there's lots of other request options. We could we could do immediate, but that would take care of for the whole application. I yes. do not recommend that, right? I think most of your app, almost always, you want it to be here. Really, the only reason for immediate is because they wanted to be backward compatible for, for applications that if somebody had written an application that really required that. So, um, but there are so many more uh, application level settings that we should go through on another tip. Uh, unfortunately, our five minute tip today has turned into 17 minutes. Um, uh, so a long, long session today, kind of dense, but thanks for anyone that has stuck with it. Hopefully these multi-user concurrency issues will be top of mind going forward. Uh, Marwa, thanks so much. Uh, I have nothing more. I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that nobody wants uh, any additional tips. Oh, well, Brian, thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, well, great. I'm, I'm glad we had uh, we have some good feedback on this. Um, Marwa, next week you around? Yes, thank I you. Am, I am as well. So we will plan on being here next week. Uh, if you liked the show, like the show do all the things, uh, smash that button, something like that. Don't forget to write a letter to your mom about the show. She'll really want to see it. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.